John Beltran with Ron Albo here from Wild Central High School in Keensburg. The Bay Diggers getting ready for this battle against the Weld Central Rebels. And we got knocked off a bit. And now we'll be able to get this opening kickoff brought to you by Buildings by Design. Quality, commitment, and experience makes Buildings by Design the only choice when it comes to your next project. That's Buildings by Design. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Ron, in life, you need backups. Got to have a backup. And I think our backup here is operational. The Bee Diggers will kick it off. What we were mentioning, the Bee Diggers have to dominate like they have in games past, Ron. I don't think there's any doubt about it, considering Weld Central struggled this year. They're 2-5-1 and one in the Bee Diggers on a five-game winning streak. They're 6-2, and two and four of the wins on the field, they were all heavy, heavy wins. Yes, and that, I mean, like what I started to say before, Coach Schwint preached that all year long as far as the grind with these guys. Keeping, keeping focused on what the end plan was going to be, which number one was to get qualified and get in the playoffs. They've got there now. Now the last thing they got to do is finish up the season on a good winning note. Strong positive right now with this game starting out with Weld Central. And they'll take it at the nine-yard line on the return, running to the right to the 15, jitterbugging along the far sideline, the left sideline down at the 17-yard line, the B-Diggers. They're on special teams to make the play. We know that Zane Stam, he's the big guy, Ron. 1,100 yards this year. 311 were against Arvada early in the season. But uh, Harrison Chisholm's teams, they're going to run the ball a lot. They don't throw it too much. In fact, it's about a 4.5-1 ratio rushing to passing. So this could be a quick game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Coach Harrison, from all his years at Port Morgan, he thrives on the, on the ground game. And I'm sure he's not going to change much being here at Wells Central. First and 10 at their own 17-yard line. We'll introduce you to the uh, members of both teams here momentarily. Man in motion to the right. Zane Stam is the running back. He's got the football right up the middle. The beat diggers there to meet him. He does get two, maybe close to three yards at the 20-yard line as the hit was made. It's going to be a lot of Zane Stam. Second down, and we will call it two yards to go. Uh, eight yards to go for the 20-yard line. Cole Curtis was one of the members in on the hit for the B-Diggers. At the 20-yard line, trips to the right. And now they're setting up a fourth one inside the slot to the right. Back to throw, looking deep over the middle and complete. Boy, a collision out there at the 32. And just a quick pass set up by the quarterback looking for that little that little quick slant route going across. They had two receivers in that same area. One was a tight end kind of running a shallow, and he ran a slant from the far side, hoping they'd get the linebacker maybe to suck up on that tight end underneath. But Brush did a great job of covering that. It's a first name I've ever heard of, Tenaden. Tenaden, yeah. Tenaden Thompson is the quarterback for Weld Central. Boy, they're sending out a bevy of receivers, but not much of a passing game for Weld Central. Jace Cornelius was the intended receiver there. Third down and eight to go from their own 20-yard line. Out of the gun, rolling out to his right is Thompson. Heaves it up the right side, and that's going to be intercepted at the 50-yard line. A move back towards the Welch Central goal at the 45, and it is picked off over there by Caden Schwint. And he was just playing center field, Ron. That was easy for him. He looked more like the receiver. Yeah, and Caden Schwinn did a great job of staying deep on the coverage there, not letting that receiver get behind him. And he was in prime position, just like a center fielder in baseball, grabbing that pass out of the air and then returning it and getting a first down for the for the Brush Beat Diggers. Great job on the defense. Bay Diggers starting lineup is brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. The quarterback is Alejandro Maltos Garcia. We know that the number one target is Caden Moriarty, and he's got really three great backs there. Cesar Hinojos, Kyle Wellen, and Ty Griffith. Right now, it's Hinojos and Ty Griffith in the backfield. They've combined for 11 touchdowns this year from their own 45. There's the pitch right. Swinging it to the outside is Griffith to the 50. First down in Weld Central Territory along the far sideline. Knocked down at the 37-yard line. They'll backtrack it to the 30 maybe but nonetheless it's a gain of 17 for ty griffith and a brush first down ron we're going to see a lot of that tonight yes ty griffith is he's a speedy guy on the outside they give him that quick pitch a 50 a 58 this is a quick pitch to the right and just let him do the job make it make one move and get downfield first down and 10 for the weld central 38 yard line 
Same backfield. The backs are split. One receiver to the left and right. Handoff. Enojos off left tackle. He's got a hole. He's carrying defenders across the 30 to the 28. Close to a first down. He's right at the stick. It's a gain of 10. And we'll see what happens as Jace Cornelius made the hit. I don't know if they're going to measure here. Well, Ron, that's about 9.89 yards there. I'm going to give him 10 because he's right at... He just shy of the 18-yard line there for Cesar. Yes, perfect. You know, Cesar, once again, this this brush backfield, you just do not know who you can defend against. They're just so versatile, and they're so quick when they get that ball in their hands. Second and a foot to go. Wellen is in motion to the right, under center. Hondo back to throw. Here comes the pressure. He's hit as he throws incomplete, and that was intended at the 10-yard line there for Kyle Wellen. Third down, and... That's when you want to throw a pass because you have nothing to lose. No. As long as if it's not intercepted, I mean, you're going to run the ball here for a first down anyway. Yeah, great. And, you know, it's it's a great down because you come back on third down, you still got short yardage, and you're still open to a lot of things. you got a quarterback sneak, you've got a bootleg pass, and then, of course, you just run it to one of your running backs, give the ball, hand it off to them, just let them get one yard. If they cannot get one yard, something's wrong here, and that, that has not been the case all year long. Ron, the game time temperature, 61 degrees. Not too bad. It Not feels bad. colder, but it's at 61 here in Keensburg. Third down, a foot handoff. First down. He knows off right tackle inside the 10, and he spun down at about the six-yard line. That was too easy for Cesar. He knows the offensive line doing their job. And check that. It'll be the 10-yard line. So I kind of lost my way there from the 28 to the 10. 28 so. to the 10, 18 yards. Yep, 18 yards. Normally I'm good in math, but I got completely fouled up there. First and goal for the B-Diggers. Middle of the field at the 10-yard line in their first possession coming off the interception by Caden Schwint. The backs are split. Honda will hand it off. No, he'll keep it himself on the bootleg off the fake, but he's only got a yard. Tackled along the right sideline, the far sideline for a gain of only one. Second down and goal from the nine. And a great job on that bootleg. When you run that bootleg, you fake that dive to the fullback, which everybody bid on Cesar Anojos with the ball. And, of course, Honda was able to roll out to the right side, you know, pick up a few yards. Second down and goal from the nine. And this will be the sixth play of the drive, which started at their own 45-yard line. Hondo barking out the signals. Well is in motion to the right. There's the handoff on the misdirection. Griffith with an easy touchdown running to his left. There was only one defender out there. Ty Griffith scores from nine yards out. And that was disguised beautifully because nobody for Weld Central saw Griffith with the ball except one defender. And the B-Diggers lead six to nothing. Just over three minutes into the game. Yep, been set up. If you're familiar with brush offense, that's the 30 series. That's a 37, which is a counter play. Perfect time to call that play. Touchdown right where we left off last week with Ty Griffith. The extra point is up, and that is right down the middle as it was made there by the senior, Eric Gable Risch. 8.55 to go in the opening quarter. It's brush seven, Weld Central nothing in Keensburg. Let's take a 30-second break. 30 seconds on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The Bay Diggers scored on the sixth play of the drive, a nine-yard run by Ty Griffith. And set up by the Caden Schwinn interception, John Beltran with Ron Albo, sound engineer and producer, Rose Condis. And that was brought to you by Western Engineering Consultants. Fielded at the 9 along the far sideline, running to the 20. That looks like Cornelius. He's down there. That's a great open field tackle. And now we have a late flag as the tackle was made over there by Caden Moriarty. Hopefully that's not a taunting because uh, yeah, it's thrown at the very end. I mean, he did demonstrate some excitement, but it didn't appear to be taunting to me. No, a block in the back. Okay. Well, they threw that really late. Yeah, that was late. You're right. That taunting. Normally, you let that go, don't yeah. you? Yep. I mean, at that point, yes. All right, so Weld Central has the ball that should be at their own 10-yard line if they go half the distance. The block in the back was at the end of the play, but you can't stress enough, and Lance Schwinn has been talking about fundamentals. That was a, a perfect tackle there by Moriarty going yeah. ankle low. Yep. I mean, he could have weighed 300 pounds, that guy. You, you get it. You go that low, yeah. and you're going to make the play. Yep, good things happen. First and 10 from their own 10. Two receivers out to the right. Out of the gun is Thompson. Running backs to the left and right of Thompson at his own seven-yard line, and he'll hand it off, and that's going to be a loss perhaps to the nine, and that looked like it was Zane Stam. Of course, Weld Central's got those reddish uniforms with the light blue numerals. Well, he got back 
well, no, he lost some yards. He lost the it. line of scrimmage was the 12. For some reason, I'm having depth perception issues. He loses two. It'll be second down and 12. You're right, Ron. i got to get back to the eye doctor pretty quickly, and my <laughs> wife will agree. Zane Stam's got two carries for zero yards. Passing situation already. Second and 12 from their own 10-yard line. Thompson this time. Another handoff and a nice hole up the middle, but it's close quickly. A gain of about three. I mean, he's not only your leading ground gainer with over 1,100 yards, yeah. he's your leading receiver. Yes, and that is that is amazing that that happens that way, you know, from just one individual like that. That just tells you the talent that that young man has, you know, on the football field. Third down and nine to go for Wild Central at their own 13-yard line. The Bee Diggers with a 7 nothing lead on the nine-yard touchdown run from Ty Griffith. 7.47 to go in the opening quarter. Out of the gun on third down and nine. Thompson with a deep drop. Here comes the pressure up the middle. He'll take off. He's going to be sacked. Back at about the 9 or 10 yard line. And the Bee Diggers just collapsing that pocket. It closed very quickly. And Cesar Hinojos was one of three Bee Diggers in on the play. Yeah, that pocket just went crazy. When it just went flat real quick. There, He had nowhere to go. He stepped up into the pocket. But our defensive line did such a great job of staying there. Playing, being, you know, being, playing their assignment football, and they were right there to wrap him up. Didn't let him get out and make any kind of play. So, now great job. Yeah, now you've got an excellent punt returner there in Caden Schwent. As the Weld Central punter, two yards into his own end zone. Heavy rush and nearly blocked end over end. It'll be dropped and then picked up at the 38-yard line. Schwent along the left sideline to the 20. Speed to burn. He's down at the 17. And it's a return of 21 yards. And the punt went for 28. And... If had Caden caught that cleanly, you know, that's that extra step yep. that he could have had on the sideline. I'm yep. not saying he would have gone. And I believe, do we do have a penalty marker? There is a penalty marker. I think from had a block in the back on yep. Brush. That's yep. they're usually usually with that referees out, that indicates a block illegal a block in the back. So. Well, that would set him up near midfield unless it occurred at around the twenty five yard line. Yep. Somewhere near the end of the play, like we had the block in the back earlier. And it will be placed now. Actually, it's a holding call on the return. Well, which is the same, same penalty thing. yardage. Same penalty, yep. Just a different call, but yeah, same penalty-wise. But it was closer to the end of the play because the Bay Diggers have the football at the 39-yard line. Oh, they're still walking. No, they haven't walked it back. It'll be near midfield. Yep. It'll be 49 of Weld Central. But again, the first drive went for 55 yards. And it'll be first and 10 for the Bee Diggers. From the 49 yard line. So far, Griffith, two carries for 26. He no holds two for 28. So the running game has been effective as it's been all season. At the 49, the Bee Diggers up by a touchdown with 6.57 to go in the opening quarter. In motion to the right as well. And this pitch right to Wellen. He's got nowhere to go, but he's able to squeeze a couple of yards out of that. Tremendous penetration along the left side there by the Weld Central defense. But Ron Wellen just stayed low, and that's how he was able to lunge his way to the 47-yard line. If not, he could have lost a couple of yards. lost about three yards on that play. And that, that play is set up. He's lined up on the left side of the formation, and he runs a, a motion, but he runs the high motion behind the four, behind the backs, and they get that quick pitch to him, giving him a little more opportunity to kind of see the field and hopefully make a cut and get, to, get a big play out of that. So Second down. And an eight for the B Diggers at the Weld Central 47 yard line. Schwint is the receiver to the left. B Diggers have a receiver out to the right. The backs are split. Hondo back to throw. Plenty of protection off his back foot, right sideline. And that's going to be intercepted, I believe. Or did Moriarty wrestle it away? He did. Moriarty took it. Unbelievable. It should have been picked off. Moriarty has it at the 23 yard line. A poorly thrown ball, but it's a gain of 24, Ron, and a first down. And you know, Cade Moriarty has been the go to guy all year long. As the season has went on, just. The, the amount of physicality, how, he, how physical he is on the football field, and he's not going to let anybody take that ball from him. He just wrestled it right out of their hands, automatic first down. I think he's uncoverable yeah, at times. I mean, great. he First and 10 for the Bee Diggers of the Weld Central 23. Let's see if this is a run play. This will be right up the gut. Hinojos is free at the 10 to the 5 touchdown. He was touched maybe at the line of scrimmage, but that was too easy for Sesson. 23 yards away, the Bee Diggers have two rushing touchdowns tonight. At the six-minute mark of the opening quarter, and it's Brush, 13, Weld Central, nothing. Enojos now has 51 yards on three carries. Yeah. Big, big plays. 
great job on the part of the offensive line, opening up those holes and letting those running backs just run free. Let's see, Eric is going to boot this baby. Oh, he's got such nice technique. Yeah. It just, boy, he barely, barely kicked that football and he swept it all the way through. It's good. We're still in the opening quarter, midway through on senior night in Keensburg. It's brush 14, Weld Central nothing, a 30-second break on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The Bay Diggers just scored in a 49-yard drive. That was a 23-yard touchdown run by Enoholes and a little pooch along the sideline, fielded at the 19 and down right there. And that was obviously done on purpose, Ron, because the Bay Diggers wanted to prevent a, a big kickoff return and that was done perfectly by Eric yes you know coach talked about his special teams about how they have have improved as the years going on and that's one of the the parts we know their defense is solved we know their offense what they can do we got to make sure that the special teams are intact on down the road how many teams did you coach where that was a deficiency <laughs> yes we've had it we had our fair share of that that's for sure <laughs> and every time I address it with Randy oh yep. my gosh oh, here we go again yep. first and ten Weld Central their own 20 yard line Again, out of the gun, five yards behind center is Thompson. And this time on the counter, and a big loss back at the 14-yard line. That's not Stam that time. That's the secondary back for Weld Central, Gunner Hesse. Oh, and there was tremendous penetration. I think the beat digger that made the play was Kale Stegner. Kale Stegner. Yeah, he's come on to be a solid defensive end for for Brusher, you know, big tall kid, which is what you want on the defensive end right there, but also being a physical presence out there. Without a doubt, second down and 15 to go from the 15-yard line. The B Diggers up 14 to nothing in the early going. Again, Thompson out of the shotgun. We'll hand it off to Stan running left side, and he's going to be swallowed up for a loss. Not even close back at the 12-yard line. Too many B Diggers there. Too many unblocked B Diggers. Enojos and others were in on the play including Caden Moriarty, a loss of three, third down, and 18 to go. And, Ron, they don't have to really play against the pass, which is why they're – No. I don't want to say they're cheating up there, but why not if they know the run is a strength? Yep, exactly. I mean, they're just they're just they're attacking them where they know that they need to attack them at. On third and 18 from the 12, Thompson with a deep blitz. drop, rolling right, throws off his back foot, caught, but that's Ty Griffith right there to make the play. And that's to the original line of scrimmage. That might be, yep, it is Zane Stam again on the reception. But he had one place to go, and that's called nowhere. Yeah, and, you know, Coach Rosenbrock and, and the staff has, has scouted uh, Weld Central very well. I watched a little film on him, and you, you get used to their tendencies, and Coach knew exactly on certain formations where they're going to be running, and when he set those blitzes, they were perfectly timed and came up with big plays. I'm impressed by the discipline, Ron. They're just staying right there. I don't have 34. The heavy rush. The punter on the roster bounces at the 38-yard line, and it's going to be right there at the 40, a punt of 28 yards with no return. And are you noticing the B-Diggers are getting better and better field position-wise? Yeah. They went 55 yards, 49 yards. Nine yards, that is, and now just 40 yep. yards away from the land of no hash marks. So, you know, if, if Weld Central's not careful, next thing you know, they'll be at the 30. Next thing you know, they'll just <laughs> hand them the ball and score a touchdown. They won't, they're not, they're making it very easy for them, half a field. Fort Morgan blocked a punt last night, Ron. They were up 14 0. They were at the 14 yard line. Three plays went a negative four. Oh. You, they settled for a 35 yard field goal. You rarely see that when yeah. you get a scoring opportunity and you go backwards. Yes. <laughs> that but that's what happened. First and 10 at the 40. Hondo, play action, looks to throw over the middle. Caught by Moriarty, Moriarty short of a first down. I'll slow down next time, a gain of nine to the 31. And the tackle was made by Tenayden Thompson. But, well, that's a quick hitter right there. That didn't take much. Yeah, that's, a, that's just a nice play action pass, an 81 dump to the tight end. One of Brush's bread and butter plays as far as offense goes and passing plays. And Caden Moriarty comes up big time once again. First score of the game, again, brought to you by Western Engineering Consultants. Another fine sponsor of Morgan County Athletics. Hondo drops it, and he's got to land. He pulled out a little bit too early from under center. It'll be a loss of a yard to the 32. The ball almost rolled forward. And now we're looking at a third down and two to go. But this still should be easy pickings. The offensive line has done a, a handy job. 
they've really gelled together this year. I mean, obviously getting, you know, you know, Jace Krieger stepping in there from his running back spot to help shore up some stuff. And it's just amazing how well these guys are playing together now at the right time. On third and two for the 32. Moriarty's in motion to the right. This will be a handoff up the middle. First down. There's Ty Griffith getting loose at the 15. He slams into a defender at the 10. There's a late flag, though. I think that's going to be a first down still because the flag is at around the 19-yard line. So let's see what happened there. It would be a gain of 23 yards. because Well, the 10, 20, 22. Yeah, 22 yards. Now, let see, they're spotting the foul at the 19. Okay. So that's the yardage you would actually get if they walk it off for the 19. It would be a 13-yard gain. And that is a block in the, the back. back. But that should give them the first down. And it is a first down. So let's give them 13 yards for Griffith. You know what? I would not want to be standing in front of Ty Griffith. No. I he, mean, he looks like he's about to roll over you. Yeah, he is just, he's just so, he, he's so strong. He's physical. He's fast. He's a quick hitter of the hole. And like you said, when he gets a full head of steam, don't try to bring that guy down head on. He's going to run over you and put his cleat right in your chest. I'm up here and I'm intimidated. <laughs> First and 10 for the 29 of Weld Central. The B-Diggers have won, I believe, run just two plays in their own territory. The backs are split. Hondo, play action. He's got wide Moriarty open. wide open right sideline. Has it at the 12. Makes a move. First and goal at about the 6. And nobody accounted for Caden Moriarty as they will spot the football at the 6. It's a gain of 23. And Hondo has completed his last three passes for 56 yards all to Moriarty. Yeah, once again, Caden is just a physical receiver. He's tough to handle. He's hard to cover. Nobody got a hand on the tight end getting off the line of scrimmage, which is the number one thing you got to make sure you take care of. You got to get a hand on that tight end. You can't let him have a free release, and he had one right there. You and I saw that pretty quickly. I, you saw that like right at, as soon as he started taking off for that uh, that route along the sideline. The Bay Diggers call a timeout. Brought to you by Greg Bowen at State Farm Insurance, eight four two forty five fifty five. Home Auto Life and Health, Greg Mullen, an outstanding and a longtime sponsor of Morgan County Athletics. John Beltran with Ron Albo. Minute 45 to go in the opening quarter. The B-Diggers lead 14 to nothing. A nine-yard touchdown run from Ty Griffith and a 23-yarder from Cesar Hinojos. And about to make it three for three. And this is what we documented at the outset of the broadcast. Brush cannot just win this game. They have got to control the game and dominate like they have their previous four opponents. Yeah, they have to. And, you know, that goes a long way when it comes into the final rankings with the RPI standings as well as the coaches' poll that I believe they have and another ranking that they use. So every time they score, every time they dominate somebody, comes in handy for them as far as that final seeding goes. And you know, a lot of the coaches, including Zach Lemon at Eaton, is still looking back at that 41 nothing victory over, Va over Platte Valley. Yeah. The other ones, if okay, I yeah. get that. But that's still... You and I were stunned. Yeah, we, I think we had brush winning that night maybe by a touchdown yeah. or 10 points, but not like that. No, no. That. And that has defined the rest of their season. First and goal for the six. You've got three in the backfield. Who's going to get the handoff? And this will be left side and diving to the four, maybe the three. And the ball carrier there. Jace Krieger. Yep, it's Krieger with a rare carry early in the game, but he dives to the four for a gain of two. And that's already the fifth different ball carrier for Brush tonight. Yeah. And since he's back there in that full house backfield, they've got Cole Curtis now who's playing that left tackle spot. So, I mean, just the versatility that the offense has right now with these players is just amazing. Split backfield this time with Krieger and Griffith. Second and goal from the four. Hondo turns, hands it off right up the gut. Krieger is not into the end zone. He is taken down at the one. Looks like one of the linebackers made the play for Weld Central. Third down and goal at the one. You know, you want to experiment sometimes, but this is not the time nah. to do it. You just want to keep it basic because if your goal, which is the goal tonight, to stay healthy, you want to play as least amount of football as possible. Exactly. Yep. Third and goal. And there's the give. Right side. I don't think they got in. I think that's Krieger. He's held short of the goal line. Little looked like a full back dive there, but did not get in. And at this point, you got Sessud and Griffith sitting there. 
I'm not sure if he hit the wrong hole, Ron, or yeah. if there was a hole. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, looking at uh, Weld Central's defense, they've got the A-gap cover. They've got everybody lined up in there nice and tight. So, you know, what a good play would have been an off tackle or just a bootleg at this point. Well, let's see what happens. Right hash mark, fourth and goal inside the one. They're at the foot line. Baxter split again. Hondo, hands off left side, touchdown. They gave Krieger another opportunity, and he plowed into the end zone. The third Beat Digger to score tonight on the ground, and the Beat Diggers now lead 20 to nothing. We have one second to go <laughs> here in the first. And if you're watching film and you're scouting these guys, you're saying, as the opposing teams, oh, who in the heck are we going to key on at this time? There's just so many weapons available. The extra point by Gable Risch is up, and that baby is right down the middle. We'll keep it right here with a second to go. The Bay Diggers now lead 21 to nothing. Not just a bank in Colorado. They're Bank of Colorado, proud supporter of local sports and academics, and of course, home field sports exchange as well. Got to give them a mention here. Morgan County Athletics as the Bay Diggers have gone three for three so far. Touchdowns by Griffith, Enojos, and Jace Krieger. Long night for Weld Central, maybe a short night for us. Exactly. And thanks to the crew, they gave us a nice table here. Yeah, took care of us. Yeah, yeah. Hats off to the Weld Central people. Absolutely. Great hospitality. What do you think of this field? You know, it's a really nice field. I like it a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's it's well maintained. It's in good shape. What do you so. call the turf? I mean, is it just turf? Yeah, I don't know. Remember what when it used to be poly and AstroTurf? That thing yeah. was like a hard rock. And yeah. That, it's tough that, to play on. That was basically on concrete. <laughs> uh, it was on concrete, right. It was green concrete. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, these are much softer. So this is a little bit softer, a little bit more... Um, you know, you can design it the way you want based on your school colors. Yep. Boy, what the heck of a kick there at the five yard line. Here's the return across the 10 to the 15, breaking a tackle. And then, wow, that's a big B digger tackle at the 18 yard line. That was not Cornelius that time. I believe that was a, another member of the uh, Weld Central Rebels. They're going to have those light blue numbers. But the B diggers now have drives of 55, 49, and 40 yards. Yep. And that last drive for them was eight plays, 40 yards, resulting in a Jace Krieger touchdown. So, you know, Brush is doing it every way that they can. They've even got the they've got the passing game going, you know. I'm sure they like to maybe score a couple of touchdowns in the passing ranks. But right now, you know, just like like you said, let's just keep it basic. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. Let's just do it good and, and force people to stop it. And at this point, it doesn't look like we're getting very much stopping. Well, hit the second quarter. We'll keep it right here. But you know what I do like so far about this first quarter run? You know, it's nice to score in the big play, and Brush has done a lot of big play scoring. But I think if you're going to establish yourself as a playoff football team even more, and of course the opposition's got to play some competitive football, they've got to cooperate a little bit. It's nice to go on a seven, eight, nine play drive as opposed to 70 yards, 60 yards. That's almost too easy. Exactly, because the you're going to run into that in the playoffs. Very rarely do you ever blow anybody out. You might get lucky in the first round of the playoffs, maybe. But from that point on, everybody's there for a reason because they played good football all year long, and that's exactly what you want to do is line up against those good ball, ball teams, and you want to be able to grind it out. First and 10 for Weld Central at their own 18-yard line, a pass out in the right flat incomplete. Kyle Wellen was right there as the pass was intended for Dominic Jones. Second down and 10, and again, they're not a proficient passing no. team, so even that pass, that's a that's a... It's a long pass, but you got to throw it right on the money. And Thompson so far is one out of four with an interception and no yardage. The one they completed went for nothing. Yeah, He's not on the money right now. Second and 10 at the 18-yard line. Out of the gun, the running back to the left of him is Zane Stam. He's got the handoff. He's got a hole up the middle, breaking a tackle across the 20 to the 24. It's a gain of six. That's one of his better runs tonight, his best run. Cesar Hinojos makes the hit third down and four for Weld Central and he's officially back in the plus category. Yeah, he's you know, he's a real, he's a thick kid. He's probably about 6 foot 6 1, maybe 2 20 25 I'm guessing. He's a pretty a really big thick kid. And I think so he's a wrestler. Yeah, I, I imagine when he gets, you know, ahead of steam going, he's going to be difficult to bring down. Trips to the right. Third and 4 for the 24. Thompson 5 yards behind center is going to throw it out in the right flat. It's caught underneath and a first down across the 30 yard line. To the 31. Let's see if that's Jones. Nope. That's going to be 
Casos Ledesma instead. Ledesma. And the gain to the 31. That will give him about eight yards on the play. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. Two receivers split out to the left. Thompson awaits the snap. Has the football handoff to Stem. And he's got nothing trying to run off right guard. He's swallowed up there. The B Diggers with way too much penetration. Cole Curtis was in that backfield. Second down and 10. That was the sixth carry for only six yards for Stam. Yeah, and that's. Ron, he went for one. Sorry about that. My bad. He went for 196 last week. Some in garbage time against Platte yeah. Valley. Yep. You just never know what's going to happen week to week. I mean, you know, are you lining up against other teams and what happens with you? Second down and 10 for the 31. Thompson again, four yards behind center, is going to hand it off to Stam, and he is taken down for a loss back at the 26, 27 yard line. A loss of four, and quite frankly, the brush defense is making this look way too easy. Yes, they are. They are just. Uh, they're on a mission. They've scouted them very well, and quite honestly, right now we're just a better team. We're just out. We know we're just. We're, we're better athletes on that side of the ball. And we're more physical, and we're attacking them, and it's making it difficult for them. Third down, and about 15 to go from the 26. Thompson with a deep drop, setting up a screen over the middle, incomplete. I think it was a screen, but then again, I don't see a... Yeah, it's just going to be fourth down. Yeah. Maybe I don't know if he was trying to throw a screen or a slant, but it was rather confusing. And now the Rebels will punt again. And again, we don't have 34 on the roster here for Weld Central. Nonetheless, Caden Schwint is the returner. 9.31 to go, second quarter. Brush 21, Weld Central nothing. I'd like to say a little shout out to some of those brush parents that are so endearing and it's caught by Schwint at the 39. Looking for a block, he gets one, running along the left sideline to the 50. And then he's gonna be taken out of bounds, escorted out of bounds. <laughs> Once again in Weld Central territory at the 46, a return of 15 and the B-Diggers for the third consecutive possession are starting in Weld Central territory. Yeah, so, uh, Veronica Maltos Garcia, got to give her a shout out. Kayla Kastrup and many others out there always have supported our coverage here on 1010 KSIR. And uh, you had a parent last sure week, uh, yep. Mr. Hey, Moriarty. Mr. Moriarty, yep. He was, uh, came up and wanted to congratulate us and tell us how much he enjoys the broadcast and, and what a great job we do here. And, you know, we, we take that seriously. That's something that's very, very important to us. 100%. First and 10 for the B Diggers at the 47. The backs are split in Weld Central Territory. Wellens in motion to the right. Here's a pass over the middle that's going to be broken up. Intended for Moriarty at the 31 yard line. Little play action there by Hondo, but he was well covered that time. And not even Moriarty could pull that off second and 10. No, great coverage on the part of the defense there. They knew that um, that pass play was coming and he was in, a, in good position there and didn't allow Moriarty to get that pass. And it's good they're working on this, Ron, because they could just run the ball successfully. And But, you know, you want to diversify the playbook a little bit. Second down and 10 for Brush at the 47-yard line of Weld Central. The backs are split. Welland in motion to the right again. Counter. Griffith, left side. He's got a first down across the 40. He spun around at the 35-yard line. And Ty Griffith, like a big, strong back with a gain of 12 for the junior. Yep, once again, brush back to that 30 series, that counter where he runs a 37 there, and they've got a guard pulling and just opening the hole there for him on that side of the line makes it a big play for Ty. The Bay Diggers are over 100 yards rushing, 51 yards on four carries for Ty Griffith. They've got rushing touchdowns from Griffith, Enojos, and Krieger in that order. From the 35 of Weld Central, 8.50 to go in the opening half, 21 nothing brush. This will be a gift to the deep back. Enojos, he's got big time yardage. He goes for the first down. He continues to carry defenders at about the 23 yard line. Pick up about 13 again. 13 exactly. From the 36 to the 23. Enojos now four carries, 64 yards. So they've combined for 115 yards between Enojos and Griffith. Rebels. 
near the right side of the field for the Bee Diggers. First and 10 at the 23 yard line of Weld Central. The backs are split again. Wellens a receiver this time, right up the middle to Hinojos. Short yardage to the 20. Before that tackle was made by Chad Decking. Who is a junior. Second down and seven. And we know that Harrison Chisholm's the head coach of the Rebels, but he's in transition here yeah. trying to develop this program. It's going to take a while, Ron. Yeah, and, you know, he's got a he's got a, a great formula, I'm sure. Once he gets it going, he's just got to, you know, get the kids to buy into it and get them used to what's what's going on. At the 20 of Weld Central, Hondo under center. Handoff to Griffith, uh, Nohos back towards the middle. First down across the 15 to about the 12. It's a gain of eight for Cesar Nohos. Just like that, the clock keeps running, picking up first downs. That's it, making it nice and easy for the bead diggers. We still have 7.18 to go in the opening half. And we're approaching a six play drive right now, so that's good for them. They're just, you know, let's see if we can get to eight plays. Well, the shortest one's a three play <laughs> drive. Yeah, absolutely. At the 12 yard line, the backs Again, are you no know, holes? And uh, this time it's a bootleg running left from Maltos Garcia. Nobody's there. He's going to score easily. Oh, ho! Hondo into the end zone. The fourth different B digger to score on the ground. 12 yards for number 12. Brush 27. Weld Central. Nothing. And it was just a matter of time before the bootleg paid big dividends that time. You know, with the, with all that dive play, with the trap play, the trap play, all of a sudden they get them used to si sucking in on that, and then Hondo's wide open on a bootleg. So, great job. You know, that's how they set the plays up. They're calling plays for certain things to set certain things up, and that's exactly what they were looking for. Off the hold of Caden Schwint, Gable Risch, and there was movement. But they're going to kick the extra point anyway. Barely got it over the crossbar, but there had to be a flag or something prior to that. Maybe against Weld Central. And if it's against Weld Central, I think the B-Diggers will still kick the extra point. No, I think they're going to move it back. This will turn into about a 23-yard extra point. No, it is against Weld Central. I saw the, the official facing one direction, but it is offside. Yeah, it looked like he was coming back. And I thought for a second it might have been one of our inside linemen there. That ball on the level. Now the extra point to be attempted. That is up, and that one looks good. Inside the left upright, 6.56 to go. Second quarter with the score. Brush 28, Weld Central nothing. A 30-second break on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Along with Ron Albo, I'm John Beltran. Ron, not a two or three or four play drive. They actually ran some plays there and got back into the end zone. Yeah, six plays there. Great job for the, for the Brush beat digger. I know that if they can just continue to build upon that, extend it to seven, eight plays, and start to chew up more of this clock here, you know, and score some more points. That's exactly what they want to do. To be able to have those sustained drives is definitely going to come in handy down the road. Now the kickoff, and that one's booted along the left sideline, fielded at the 12, and a big strong run. That is Cornelius getting loose across the 30, and he's down at the 33 before the hit is made. Nice open field tackle there for Wiley Eicher. A sophomore. B Diggers with that 12 yard touchdown run from Hondo with a 28 0 lead. With the football at the 33. Out of the gun is Thompson, four yards behind center, awaits the football, has it. He'll hand it off right side, and that is Gunnar Hesse along the sideline with a couple of yards. He ran out of room well and ran him out of bounds. And actually, I don't think he got back to maybe the line of scrimmage. He was running so wide, Ron, it was all east-west. Yeah, he barely made it back to the line of scrimmage, so that'll bring up second down and, and ten for them. But that's not exactly what he wants to do. You need to be able to get north and south, so I'm sure that... Uh, their coaches are getting a little frustrated with that. Yeah, they gave him a yard to the 34. Hesse now with two carries for a negative four yards. The brush run defense has been wicked. On second and nine for the 34, Thompson this time. There's the handoff, and right up the middle, Stam with a big carry. Short of a first down, but he's got seven to the 41. That's their biggest rush of the night. 
But even then, Stam has got nine yards on eight carries. And the Bee Diggers will receive the second half kickoff, but there's still plenty of time here in the opening half. Yep. 28 nothing brush, 6-10 to go. We'll have a nice extended halftime show on third down and two. That'll give Ron and I a little bit of a rest. The Bee Diggers nearly jumped. Thompson this time, handoff left side, back to the middle, first down. Nice cut there by Stam, a gain of a three. Moriarty. And Chase Krieger made the hit. You know, Jace Krieger just contributing on both sides of the ball, running the ball, scoring touchdowns, also playing the outside linebacker, defensive end, and some of the defensive fronts they've got here, making big plays on the field. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Receivers put left and right. Thompson again, four yards behind center, low snap. There's the give right side and back to the line of scrimmage. And that might have been Stam again. Oh, they give him maybe a yard. Yeah. For the beat diggers, have been making the plays. Second and nine for the 46 yard line. Approaching the five minute mark of the second quarter, beat diggers scored three touchdowns in the first quarter, one so far here in the second. Pretty good field position for Weld Central. This will be a give to Stam. And he's got a yard again, running left to the 47. Moriarty in that backfield, along with Ty Griffith. Third down and a short eight to go. They've run 13 plays on the ground, 11 to stamp, so they can key on him. Yeah, and, and you know, they take that away from them, and they've got to figure out where they've got to go to. But the defense is solid right now. The defense is not letting these guys get off the ball, making good blocks, and get to the second level. So they are controlling the line of scrimmage right now. On third and eight from their own 47-yard line, Thompson handoff to uh, that time it's Hesse, and he jitterbucks his way to the 48. Now that might be the third back. I don't know if that's Hesse. Thought I heard another name there. Yeah, that's... Uh, that is 21. Yep. Okay. So that one to Marcelo Rossi. Rossi with a gain of one, fourth down and seven. You know, it's their last game of the season. Why don't you just go for it? And they're going to do that. Yep. Fourth down and seven to go. They got to get to the 45 of Brush. Two receivers split out to the left or to the right, one to the left. Thompson, low snap, looking to throw. Pressure's coming now off to the left side. He's going to have to throw up his back foot. It's going to be intercepted at the 46. Along the sideline is Krieger. He's knocked out of bounds. And the beat diggers got better field position because he did return that back further than the original line of scrimmage. And it's the second interception by the beat diggers. The first from Caden Schwint. All right, they're at the 39. So that return on the interception went for 15 yards. Yeah, Jace Krieger once again making big plays on the defense. But really, that play was not made by Krieger, whoever no. applied the pressure for Brush. That was incredible yeah. pressure. And, I mean, let's face it, Ron, you and I would have caught I mean, that was a catchable <laughs> ball by, yeah. I mean, you don't discredit Krieger. He no, made a nice no, play. No. Presence of mind to find the gap along the right side. And Caden Schwint is a late check-in, <laughs> which Coach Lanchwin is not too happy about. And he's got to call a second timeout. Brought to you by Greg Mona State Farm Insurance. B&B appliance and repair from refrigerators to vacuums and everything in between. They have exactly what you need. They'll service it too. B&B appliance and repair. All right, one nothing. Atlanta leads Houston in the fourth inning. But they had a shot to score more in the third. Not that I'm following the World Series game in game three. <laughs> but since this one... Should get out of hand, Ron. We should be done by 9 o'clock. That's yep. my, our goal here is to be walking to the parking lot at 9. Normally, Coach Schwinn does not do uh, post-game interviews on the road. No. But then again, it's been a while since the B-Diggers have played on the road. Yes. Because the Sterling game was a forfeit. They haven't played on the road in a month against Estes Park, and we still got a post-game interview with him. Yep. He's been very gracious to come up here and talk yeah. with us. Yeah, no, it's awesome. First and 10 for the Bee Diggers of the Rebels, 39-yard line, up 28-0. Hondo on the draw play to Wellen, running to his left with a stiff arm, trying to find the sideline to the 36, maybe the 35, and he's down there. Thompson with a nice open field tackle, just a gain of three. He ran three yards forward, but a lot more laterally. 
Yeah, the pressure was right there on that draw play, and so he had to get himself away from the defensive lineman there, so he had to end up running you know, to the left side of the line before he could actually cut it upfield. And the football's been extended to the 35, so a gain of four, second down and six. But once again, the story, Ron, is incredible field position for Brush. Yeah, it makes it very easy to score when you have a short field to play on. On the left hash mark on second down and six. There's the gift to Hinojos, hit at the line of scrimmage, but because he's so strong, he barreled his way for a yard. But he barely got control of that football and was popped by far his shortest carry distance-wise. He's got 76 yards on seven carries just inside the 35, third down and five to go. I'd well, look, be diggers. I'd look for another pass play to Caden Moriarty at this time. Oh, Perfect call for it right now. Ron, it'll be wide open. Yep. He's lined up as the tight end there to the, uh, is he on the left side? Yep. And this time it's a give, but short of a first down. That was Enojos. He didn't have much there. And Ron, I think your call would have been the right one because they're, they're playing the run. Only a gain of two, fourth and yep. three. And watching Caden Moriarty on that far side, he just down blocked and he just ran that linebacker all the way upfield. So he did an amazing job blocking, getting to the second level. Well, the B-Diggers have not been stopped tonight. Four possessions, four touchdowns. However, it's a fourth and three at the 33 with a minute 47 to go in the opening half. Hondo handoff up the middle. First down, Wellen is loose to the 10, to the 5. He is going to be spun down at the 1. Oh, he nearly went the distance. It's a gain of 32 for Kyle Wellen. First and goal for the Bee Diggers. And he would have been the fifth different player to score tonight. Wellen should get the ball right well, now. Wellen should get the ball now. Right? I mean, you got to make yes. it fair. Yeah, make it fair. He's the workhorse. He ran it down there. He did all the hard work. Give him the ball now to pay off, pay dividends for him. Well, that was not a run through the hole. That was an explosion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got to get the ball. I mean, this has got to be Wellen here. Split backs. Wellen and Hinojos inside the one-yard line. Hondo hands off to Wellen, and he bulls his way. Looks like he got any dead from less than a yard out. The fifth different beat digger to score. 72 seconds to go in the opening half. It's brush 34, Weld Central nothing. And just a basic dive play, a 25-minute dive on the left side of the line, wide open, scores a touchdown for Kyle Weller. We played just barely over 45 minutes here of real time. And 72 seconds to go, and now Caden Schwint will hold for Eric Gable Risch. And the kick is up, and that baby is right there. Brush 35, Weld Central nothing, a 30-second break on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The Jace Krieger interception created the short field from 39 yards out, and Kyle Wellen on a fourth and three goes 32, then in scores from a yard out, and the B-Diggers lead 35 to nothing. That is booted to the, about the nine-yard line, and here, getting loose again is Cornelius along the right side to the 40. Now to the 50, he might go all the way. Cornelius down the sideline is gone. That's close to 89 yards for a touchdown. And the B-Digger special teams have let them down here with 57 seconds to go. We'll call it 89 yards for Jace Cornelius. And it's now 35 to six. That's too bad, Ron. That's too bad, exactly, because as your number, well, the biggest thing right there is the breakdown in the special teams. I mean, we've been talking about that. That's something they've been working on. They've had good special teams, and all of a sudden they let down and give up a big play like that. Does not help their confidence at all. Happened against Valley, too. Yep. And in fact, Coach Schwen told me on B Digger Blast Off that they were still irked about that weeks later yep. because that cannot happen. No. Low snap, the kick is up and blocked. Caden Schwen came through in an easy block. So the B Diggers have it 35 to 6. But now you got to score twice to get to a running clock. And hopefully they can pull that off right here early in the third quarter. They don't have enough time in the second quarter. No, down with just less than a minute, 57 seconds to go. So, um, But, you know, a, a big uh, big booster for the sidelines here for Weld Central. And you got a big play turnaround like that. That gets these guys fired up. You know, hopefully, they, you know, they raise their intensity a little bit more. And I'm sure that's exactly what Coach Chisholm is looking for for his guys. And I know well, Co 
Coach Cardenas is probably having some words with the special team guys yeah. right now before kickoff. You can't be happy. No. And the reason being, this is not a one-time occurrence, Ron. Yeah. It's happened multiple times, and those are the things that they said they needed to make sure they worked on to shore up to complete a, to have a complete football team on down the road. To kick it off for Weld Central will be Mario Cosos Ledesma at the 40-yard line. The Bay Diggers now lead by 29, and they were up by 35 for all of 10 seconds. <laughs> and that's probably the only way they're going to score tonight, Weld Central, unless the Bay Diggers get into a running clock and then the second unit yeah. comes in and they'll keep their starters out there more than likely because they're a young football team looking for confidence. Let's see what type of return we get here. And the whistle blows, so it's no return right now. I, they and they were off sides. They'll yeah. kick off for the 35. Yeah, was there uh, the gunner on the far side of the field had jumped just before the before he was able to kick the ball, and that'll bring it back. And now the wind is kicking up quite a bit. Yeah, we're uh, we can hear it in the we can feel it on the back of our body, but you can also hear it on the radio too. Yeah. I'm sure. Well, it's part of the atmosphere. It's what you love about Friday nights, football games in high school. It's awesome. So it's. A kickoff now for the 35. Wellens down or standing at his own 14-yard line. The Bay Diggers have five touchdowns from five different players tonight, all on the ground. And Cosos Ledesma runs up to the football. And this is a little pooch towards the sideline. Fielded by Noholz at the 30. Stutter steps, cuts it back to the outside. Still on his feet. Got to about the 45-yard line. And I think the Bay Diggers have, you know, they got one timeout remaining, though. Yeah. And 50 seconds to go, Ron. I can smell a Caden Moriarty pass here. Yes, it might not be a bad idea, but the problem is that wind's coming in pretty hard there. So it unless is. that ball is delivered right on the money with some force, it's going to float and not the best thing. Without I'd say just run the ball right now and pick up what you can. Well, if they pick up a first down, the clock will stop yep. momentarily, yep. so that'll help. And with the way they blocked that last play. And Coach Still's got two timeouts, too, also. Okay, so it was Weld Central, actually, that took one of those two. Yeah, you're right. Two timeouts, my bad. So that, that changes everything. That extra timeout does really change yep. everything. First and 10 at their own 45. The backs are split only the second time the bean diggers are starting on their own side of the field. Wellens in motion to the right. There's the pitch left, and Aaron pitch. Nice catch by Griffith, cutting it back towards the middle. He's down at the 47, only a gain of two. That was disrupted because of the high pitch, and Griffith did a nice job of bringing it down. Yeah, and that's what you have to work on. That's the same same thing you run into with the pass plays. When you're getting that ball in the air, it just kind of floats there. Even on those pitches, on that 59 pitch there, that ball's going to float out there a little bit, and so you got to be very careful. The Bay Diggers are going to take this into the locker room unless they break off a huge play right now. This is a short play. This will be it. And now Hondo, bootleg left. He's to the 50 along the sideline to the 40. Hondo back to the middle at the 32. Now they might set up. He's got a first down and a gain of 22. Now I think you got to think about scoring, Ron. you got 10 seconds to go. Yeah. And talk about a play call there. I thought that was perfect. Yeah, and in, in this situation where they're setting right now, what you, what you have to look for is you maybe a possibly, I don't know that you're going to throw the ball. So I think once again is you're going to probably try to hit something with Ty Griffith off tackle like a 36 on either their counter series and let him run to the near side of the field where it's open field. Hopefully he can you know make a move or two and score a touchdown. Uh, let's not discount. There could be a field goal attempt here if they get about 15 or 20 yards. And there's a shot, but there's I'm shot. not sure how it will affect the win, but they got to pick up big time yardage here for a field goal attempt. They're at the 33. It would be a 50-yarder now. We know that's out of the question. And if they don't pick up any yardage here, they'll have one play, and they're going to have to either uh, hook and ladder or some type of uh, Hail Mary. Yeah, I, you know, I I still just really worry about that wind blowing. I don't think Coach Schwint's going to take that much of a gamble with the way this wind is because that ball can float up in the air. Yep. So, you know, let's look at the formation they come at. They're going to go... They got trips to the right, so it's a possibility they might run a like a quick bubble real quick to the inside guy here, which would be Wellen. First down and 10 for the Rebels, 33-yard line. Off the nice pickup there from Hondo. He's out of the gun. There's one setback. That is Enoholz, and he's going to take a knee. And I think Coach Schwint was thinking exactly what you said. Too much of a wind, and let's just take it into halftime. 
and we do receive the second half kickoff. It's a two minute break. Rush 35, Weld Central 6 on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Along with Ron Albo, I'm John Beltran. We've hit the Beat Digger halftime show. The Beat Diggers lead the game 35 to six and we didn't expect Brush to punt in the first half and they didn't punt at all, Ron. No, I mean, coming into this game, looking at the lineup, looking at Weld Central and how young of a school they are, young of a group they are, new system, new coach coming in. There's so many things they've got to work on. So we did figure that at that time, we probably would, uh, it'd probably be more advantage for Brush as far as coming into this game. And it's very nice in your charting of the plays that with the exception of one three play drive, everything went for a lot more. The bee diggers had to really earn their way into the end zone. Yeah, that wasn't just an easy, you know, give you the ball here and score a touchdown. They had to earn it. And that's what they need to have in these type of games right now at the end of the season as they start building towards the playoffs. They've got to be able to outlast people in long drives and pick and, and control the clock. But there was one big negative. The 89 yard kickoff returned by Jace Cornelius. And it looks worse, Ron, considering Weld Central has 20 yards of total offense tonight to 263 for Brush. Yeah, and if you've got to look at one thing that's not going to be pleasing to the uh, Brush coaching staff, it is going to be that that kickoff t for a return, you know, return for a touchdown. As we said earlier, special teams that completes the whole cycle of the team, and um, that has been a weak point and a problem that they've had to deal with all year long. So they've got to figure out a way to shore that up because we know we've been in many of these situations where a game win comes down to a field goal in overtime or a field, you know, something like that. And you got to be able to count on that and to, you know, to be able to solidify a win and also being able to keep somebody from getting back into a game when you're dominating them and running back a kickoff, you know, for a touchdown. So they've got to work on that. Absolutely. Ty Griffith, five carries, 53 yards and a touchdown. He no holds eight carries. For 78 yards and a score. Kyle Wellen has 39 yards on four carries and a touchdown. Hondo has got four carries, 33 yards and a touchdown. Jace Krieger, four carries for six yards and a score. And Hondo through the air, three out of five for 56 yards, all caught by Moriarty. Zane Stanford Weld Central, 11 carries for 15 yards. Gunnar Hesse's got two for a negative four. And Marcelo Rossi, a carry for a yard. Passing game is not there. Weld Central is two out of seven passing by Tayden, uh, Tanayden Thompson for eight yards and two interceptions. So we are at the break. At the top of the hour, we've got a special feature as we do every week. With the score, Brush 35, Weld Central 6 on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran back with Ron Albo. Let's head to the third quarter in Keensburg. The Bee Diggers with a 35-6 lead over the Weld Central Rebels, the lone mishap. The 89-yard kickoff return by Jace Cornelius, but you have uh, Ty Griffith from 9 yards out, Sessat from 23, Hondo scored late from 12 yards out. You've got uh, Kyle Wellen from a yard out. Jace Krieger also scored from a yard away, so a couple of one-yard touchdowns. And as Ron documented uh, to begin the halftime show, the Bee Diggers have actually uh, matriculated the ball down the field. It hasn't made just huge plays. In fact, what the biggest play of the night Really is nothing uh, nothing special for Brush. Biggest play of the night was a 32-yarder. 32-yarder. Yeah. The field there is, is pretty amazing compared to a lot of other teams. But well, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, we're uh, and we're talking about a 32-yard. Most people would take 32-yard plays all the time. And here we are saying it's just a 32-yard play because we're running 60 yards, 70 yards, you know, down the field. So, That's it. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're very lucky and very fortunate to have the type of, uh, you know, plays that we've got going for us and, and how, we, how our offense runs. You know, one thing that I did want to mention is as I'm looking at our kicking game and watching, you know, uh, our kicker is that he has become a whole lot more smoother as the years went on. It's almost like he's, if you're a golfer, you know, you're up there in your putt and how you just kind of swing through that. His leg hooks that ball through nice and smooth. And that has been good to see him as the year has progressed this year. It looks like it's very effortless for yes. Eric. Very effortless. And this one is kick way out of bounds, about 20 yards out of bounds along the left side. They wanted nothing to do with that return. No return. And in fact, the bee diggers are gonna get better field position because normally it's marked at the 35, I thought, or am I wrong yes, about no, that? no, it's 35. But I think they're gonna- it Went out about the 43 yard line. Yeah, that's what was. I'm saying. I think that it, it might be, they might mark it on the spot. Oh, wow. And that's the way to do it. You, you shouldn't be allowed just to kick it out of bounds no. 
you, you, it's like getting the ball back to the line of scrimmage as a quarterback if you're throwing it away. Yeah, you got to make some effort to, to get the play there and keep the ball in bounds for them. So they're going to start at the 45-yard line. First and 10 for the B diggers. Do they have a six player that can score? They don't actually. Well, Moriarty. Ah, uh, Moriarty. They are. They've also got Jonathan Becker, too. Yeah, through the air. And Jonathan Becker's got massive speed. Wallen in motion to the left. There's the inside handoff right up the middle. Enojos is loose along the sideline to the 30. Enojos to the 20 with defenders in pursuit. He's gone. 55 yards. Talk about a big play. And the B diggers just got it right there. Up the middle to begin with and along the right sideline. Brush 41, Weld Central 6. And you know that the offense comes out. I know they said we want to establish this line of scrimmage and continue to dominate the uh, Weld Central Rebels, and they did that right off the bat in the first play. So great job. 11 minutes and 49 seconds to go in the first or the third quarter. So 133 yards on nine carries for Sessad. And Eric Gable Rich to attempt the extra point, and that is. As smooth as silk. <laughs> 42 to 6, the Bay Diggers with the lead. High Plains Bank and Wiggins. Check them out at highplainsbank.com. Serving our rural communities, High Plains Bank and Wiggins. And the Bay Diggers now are one touchdown away from getting this to a running clock. Now, Ron. What do the bee diggers do with a kickoff? Uh, you gonna squib this thing? No. I, I, I uh, it also this this probably would be a good time to try this something like that possibly and see if they can get the ball back. Well, but I'm not I, taking I, on side. Yeah. I'm talking no, no, no. a squib where no, you keep squib. it away from. Yeah, you're right. You know. Yeah. And one so, of those at around the 30 yard line. Possibility, I, but I think they they still try to keep it deep and pin them back deep in their own okay. end zone. Well, they have the ability. They've done it a few times this game. It's just that one collapse that they had earlier. Yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah, I think he wants to test the special teams. Hey, you guys got to get this done. We don't want to just give it up easy. <clears throat> this will be towards the sideline. It bounces, still bouncing it around the 18-yard line and picked up. And now there's going to be a little bit of running room. And there was a little seam there a bit. to the 24. That was not Cornelius, so I think they kept it away from him. And that's the one thing. I think there was a concerted effort. One to kick it towards the sideline, which actually was the case last time with yep. the long return. But that was not Cornelius there. First and 10 for Weld Central at their own 25 yard line. The Bay Diggers with a 41 to 6 lead. Second touchdown of the game for Sesat Inojos. Awaiting the snap out of the gun is Tanayden Thompson. There's the give and a big hole, which closes rather quickly across the left side of the 29. And that is Zane Stam once again, who has 19 yards on 12 carries. That's great defense by Brush. They pretty much kept him in check all night long. They knew that that... Their passing game was not one of their strong points, so all they had to do is focus on the run and shut these runners down. On second down and six for the 29-yard line. Two receivers split out to the right, but they haven't passed much. Thompson this time is going to hand it off again. Off to the right side. That's Stan for a game of, a game of one. Nope, it's Gunnar Hesse. Check it. Hesse still in the negative category. Third down and about five yards to go. To give to Stam running wide to the left. And Enojos has him and throws him down at the 29, a loss of one. And when he tried that cutback, his feet went out from under him. But Enojos had something to do with that. Yeah, he was. You know, he's a big guy to move. I mean, he's a strong, he's got, he's got big, thick legs on him. He's got a lot of strength. That's where his power is in his body. And it comes in handy on both sides of the ball. You imagine for a guy with 196 yards and a 36 point loss last week to Platte Valley, Stam has 18 yards on 13 carries. <laughs> yeah. Amazing Just, job by Brush. And we have under 10 minutes to go in the third. The B Diggers need a touchdown to get this to a running clock. Heavy rush. And that's a line drive. That's going to bounce at the 38 yard line, take a Weld Central roll. It'll be downed at the 35. And the B Diggers are 65 yards away from going to that second unit. And they have not been stopped tonight. 
Ron, but no surprise there. No, no. I mean, they're they're uh, they're running as smooth as you possibly can on all cylinders on that offense there, and and the defense has done a great job. They've answered the call here, and they they take pride in their in what they're doing on the football field. And when you've only got one dimension of an offense to worry about, it makes it very difficult for it. Extremely. First and ten, the bead diggers lining up on the right hash mark at their own 35-yard line, leading by 36 with 9:47 to go in the third quarter. Hondo is under center. You've got three in the backfield now. Baxter split with Wellen in motion to the left. This will be the inside handoff, and that's a big hole for Enojos to the 45. Back to the middle, to the 40. Now to the 30. He might go to the 20. Enojos is going to do it again to the 5. Touchdown. Holy Mahungas. Cesar Enojos just went 65 yards. Oh. 65 yards. He is now approaching the 200-yard mark, and the beat diggers lead. 48 to 6. And he no holes now. Oh, this is too bad. He's going to be taken out of the game yeah. with 198 yards, Ron. And now the extra point to be attempted. Yeah, that, that should be it. Running clock and the kick is up and good. Let's take a one minute break. We're back in one minute. Nine minutes to go with a running clock in the third. It's brush 49, Weld Central 6 on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. And the kick goes out of bounds at about the 16-yard line, so Weld Central will have it at the 35. Cesar Hinojos has the only two plays for Brush in the second half. Touchdown runs of 55 and 65 yards, three touchdowns on the night. He's got 10 carries unofficially for 198 yards. But he's done for the night, you would think, along with all the other bead diggers. Yeah, they'll they'll let him. They, they probably will have him set. I know they're going to stay on defense for a while. First and 10 at the 35. There's the handoff to Zane Stam, and he's eaten up in the backfield trying to run to his left. Kyle Wellen and others around the football. And it'll be second down. We'll call it 10. He got back to the line of scrimmage, but there's just nowhere to go. No, they've... Coach Rosenbrock's got these guys lined up. They're in great positions. They're there to make plays. You know, and as I've been watching throughout the game, he sent blitzes a lot during the night at different times, crucial times, and made big plays come out of it. So, you know, right now, Jace Krieger's lined up to the near side here. Looks like he might be going for a, going on a blitz. Uh, there was about, I think that was on the center there, Ron. Everybody yeah. moved, but the center did not snap it. So that's going to be a penalty against Weld Central. Second down and 15 now at the 30-yard line. But you know what I love about penalties? When a running clock is in existence. You know, because it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop the clock. Right? I mean, we literally have just over 18 minutes of football. Yeah. And the real time right now is 826. We'll probably be in that parking lot by no later than 9 o'clock. No later than 9. Second down and 15 from the 30. They can only stop for injuries and timeouts. Thompson, a deep drop. Throws out to his right. It's dropped. At the 36-yard line, that was a perfect pass to Dominic Jones, but right through the breadbasket. Yeah, and right there waiting for him to lay the hit was Caden Schwent, and I'm sure he probably heard that guy and knew where he was, and that probably took his focus off a little bit on that ball. Now checking in is, well, that's just Thompson getting the play from the sideline. Third down and 15 to go for the 30. The Bay Diggers with a 49 to 6 lead, two plays, two touchdowns after they led 35 to 6 of the half. Thompson in a passing situation, but he's going to hand it off to Stam and that's going to go nowhere. Back to the line of scrimmage and at best. And again gang tackling by the Bay Diggers, just way too many Bay Diggers there. It's almost like they're playing one against five. Yeah, and you know, talking to uh, Coach Schwent, and I know on the interview you talked to them earlier, that that is one thing they preached a lot of as far as gang tackling. And they do a lot of drills in practice that focus on that, so it becomes just like normal routine for them and habit. Every time they're going to tackle somebody, they've got multiple guys there to make sure nobody's going anywhere. Caden Schwent wants to do one thing, take it to the house, but he needs that type of punt. A snap, and that one's off oh, the oh, side oh. of the foot. The bee diggers had a heavy rush. It's going to go out of bounds at the 32. The punt goes for about two yards since the line of scrimmage was the 30. And they sent the punt block that time with uh, 
with uh, Ty Griffith on the near side here. He went in, he was right there in the way of the punter. I'm sure that scared him a little bit, and that caused him to not get that ball off like he needed to, so now Brush has got the ball. Now we know the punter's Blake Dominguez. Yeah. Quite frankly, he had no option. No. That would have been blocked and stuffed right back in his face. Yeah. You know, I finally saw a play from a Thursday night game a few weeks ago. The Seahawks punter had it blocked. He picked yes. it up and punted it like yeah. 68 yards. Yes, I, do I, I didn't know that, that was legal. That you could punt it twice. <laughs> yeah, I do I knew remember you could that. pick it up on your own side and run with it, uh -huh. but I didn't know you could punt it twice. Yep, I didn't know that either. That's true. I remember oh, that Oh, man, game. you learn something new every day, even in the sport <laughs> of football. First and 10 for the Bee Diggers at the 32-yard line with 3.30 to go. And this will be, should be tying in there. No, Ivan Cardenas, a quarterback keeper. And then he spun down at the 31. Yvonne gays a yard. Yep. Second down and nine. Oh, who, oh, well, Brush called the timeout to get the second unit in. Yeah, that's pretty typical for them. We, we, that's something that the offense and the Brush you know, football team has always done. You call a timeout, get your guys lined up, make sure you got all the young guys where they need to be. No matter, right. even though they played in lots of games, they still get nervous that first time out on that field for whatever game it is they're playing. So you got to make sure everybody is out there where they need to be. No, without a doubt. I mean, it makes complete sense. Yeah. So it's second down and nine for the Bee Diggers of the Wild Central 31. We're under a running clock unless it stopped for a timeout, which we had here, or an injury. And the Bee Diggers are up by 43. All right, Ron, let's face it. Anything less than winning this game under a running clock would have been a failure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's it's just the way the schedule worked out for, for right. Brush, knowing that the type of team that they are, and, and as they've started to progress all year long, it just set them up in situations like this. So the quarterback is Nate Tyne, a junior. And there's the give up the middle for some big yardage. I think that's Becker to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, that is Jonathan Becker, 31 yards away. And the B-Diggers just keep scoring on big plays here in the second half. Make Becker the sixth different B-Digger to score rushing touchdown. He knows holes has three of the touchdowns tonight on his own. And Brush now leads 55-6. to six. And By the time we get to the kickoff, Ron, there's going to be about a minute 10 left. Yeah. The extra point by Eric Gable-Risch. And right there, B-Diggers lead by 50. 56-6. to six. We'll have the kickoff. And, yeah, we're going to be done quick. Our sound engineer and producer, Rose Condes, she's going to be very happy. I mean, I'm happy. <laughs> and, yeah, me too. We've got to drive home, so that makes it makes us getting home you a know, little bit earlier. That was a very selfish comment by me. <laughs> We're happy. I'm sorry, Ron. <laughs> I didn't mean to exclude you. That's okay. I understand. But how about this big play? the big plays here in the second half? We didn't have any of that in the first half. No. Not like this. No. Yeah, crazy. Crazy yeah. big plays. You know, as you look at Brush's offense, you, it, it's going to be a very difficult offense to prepare for and to defend. And I think, you know, we can go back to, you know, 10 years ago, seven, you know, eight to 10 years ago when Brush had the same type of offense out there with the same type caliber of players. And it was hard to defend and hard to know how you're going to prepare for them. Now the kickoff here for Eric Gable Risch right down the middle. Takes a hop at the 20 and it's dropped, picked up at the 20 now. And a big seam up the middle along the 30-yard line, looking for a block to the outside and back to the inside of the 40 and down at the 45-yard line. Let's see who that returner is for a return of 25 yards. But again, that was Jace Cornelius, the touchdown maker for Weld Central, went 89 earlier in this game. And on that uh, special teams kickoff team for Brush, that's a younger group. They're substituting in their guys, so they're getting the, letting these younger guys play. But once again, you got to expect that sometimes there's going to be breakdowns in there. They don't be, want that to happen, but no, it's the reality. It should be the final play here of quarter number three. Maybe they've got one more after this with 47 seconds to go. Tenoy didn't hand off to Stam, and he was grabbed high and then taken down at about the 50-yard line. But as Ron mentioned, lots of second-teamers out there. It's a gain of five to the 49. This is where Stam gained all those yards last week against Platte Valley. 
So he's now up to 23 yards on 16 carries. And that tackle right there was by Brody Dick from Brush. So Brody Dick tack number 49, tackling him at the 49. Second and five for the Rebels at the Beat Digger 49 yard line. Final play of quarter number three. Thompson four yards behind center, hands off on the right side. To Hesse, he lost the ball and the Beat Diggers are gonna have it. The Beat Digger, or do they not have it? It still squirts around. Well, Central recovered at their own 45 yard line. That must have gone through a couple of Brush players hands. It's the end of the third quarter, a one-minute break. Brush 56, Weld Central 6 on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. All right, I'm not sure what's happening as we head to the fourth quarter. That football should not be placed where it is. I'm John Beltran with Ron Albo. It should be a third down at about 10. I think they've got the line of scrimmage all messed up, Ron, because it was a loss. Yes. Was it at the 49? This would be a third and six. I still think that's but incorrect. But it's now it's a change of quarter, so they've got to... No, no, right, but so, I, yeah, I think so they it flipped be. it incorrectly. It should have been, I thought it was at the 46, but. It was at the yeah. 46. They have flipped it incorrectly. Yeah. Well, you know, I think these officials want to get the game over with, too. The beat diggers are up by 50, yeah. but that's still incorrect. Yeah, it is. That is completely incorrect. And, in fact, they're going the wrong way. Yeah, the down marker doesn't match where the ball's setting at right now. This should be third down. Uh -huh. They have screwed this up royally. Yeah. I don't know where. I mean. What the heck is going on You've here? got about, how many officials there? Not one of them can get it right? No. First of all, it looks like there's only, I'm counting only five, what, five officials working the game. Yeah. You switch sides. It should be third down at about 10. Yeah. And they have completely messed this up. It's, yeah, they That's went, what's delaying the start of the fourth quarter. Yeah, they went back to the original line of scrimmage before that play, before the fumble. But even there, it should not be at the 49. This should be third down. They've got second down yeah. on the board. Oh, my gosh. Now let's go back the other side. That doesn't make sense because the... Oh, okay. The ball was not there. No. The ball was at about the 45. I don't know what they're doing there. What is going on here? Oh, my gosh. This is ridiculous. This is, it, it should be third and ten. It's like second and five. It's like the officials complete. That, that is the height of incompetence. I'm, I'm sorry. The pass out to the right. That's going to be caught underneath. And a first down to the 43. But that shouldn't even count. No. That is awful. It's a gain of about seven. And then the down marker is pointing the opposite way on the other side. Right, of the right. It's, it's ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. They screwed up. The, the, the teams are still going. Are they, They're going to say that was an untimed down? I what? think so. Now they're going to flip sides of the field. That's exactly what happened. But they still ran it from the wrong spot. Well, well, that would have been the original spot, I think, before the loss of yards on the prior it play. Was. It okay. was. So that's why they went back to the original spot, ran that play for whatever reason. I don't know why. Ran the play from the original spot. And then now it should be, it should be correct going the opposite way now. So if that is... South, correct? Right, but it was, it was an untimed down. Yeah. But I didn't see anything that it was. I didn't see a penalty. No, I didn't either. Not, you're right. Why didn't the, the clock didn't start know. at all? I, don't I have know. no idea. We're just. Maybe if Coach Wynn comes up here, maybe he's got. We're just delaying our up. departure. <laughs> you, now you we're going to get. 9 o'clock, right? It won't be 9 oh, now. It'll be like 9.05. Darn it. Because that, that took an extra three minutes. Yeah. Easy. Three minutes of our time. We did a minute of commercials, and we're just. I mean, I could have been doing something like talking about that there was ten and a half minutes to go in the game. We still haven't started the fourth quarter. <laughs> yes. So here we go. We finally have started the fourth. There's the handoff to Stam. It's from the 43-yard line. He's driven back. Nowhere. Right at the line of scrimmage. And this might be the second team for Brush, but they're playing like the first team. Call a gain of a yard. And, Ron, the wind is still kicking up quite a bit, but... This game is over already up by yep. 50, so it's really, it's only going to take effect on the, in the kicking game. Unless Walt Central throws the ball. Brush, I doubt, would throw the ball. Yeah, I don't think they will. They're just going to keep it on the ground. And Walt Central, yeah, they, you know, the formations are shown that they should be a throwing formation, but they'll, they've got both backs on, the, on each side of the quarterback. So Second down and nine at the 42. Thompson is back to throw. Two is right, wide open, dropped at the 38-yard line, right in the hands of Cosos Ledesma. That's like the second or third drop tonight by a Rebels receiver. Yeah, and right, the ball was right in his hands. I mean, no reason why he should not have caught that ball. Third down 
and nine to go at the 42 and a half yard line. The thing with Coach Chisholm, the players want to play for him, no matter how much the team is struggling. Yes. They want to play for him, so and they want to do well for him. Yeah. But it's going to take time. Trips to the right. Now one on the inside slot, empty backfield. Thompson is looking to throw, setting up slant, is oh. intercepted by Becker off the deflection from Cornelius. And Becker's down at about the 36-yard line, right in the hands of Cornelius, and it's stuck to Becker like glue. Exactly. You know, it's just amazing how certain guys on this team, they come up big week after week after week, and he is one of those guys, him and Tanner Ludgate and, and Jace Krieger. I mean, you talk about key plays where they make things and get turnovers. It just happens week after week. Ron, what more can Tanate and Thompson do? Two great passes, one dropped, and that should have been caught. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's doing everything he can do. It's just the cards just are not in their favor tonight. No, but what a play by Becker. That's not an easy interception at all. And tied with a handoff right side to the 40-yard line. Let's see who carried that football for Brush for the gain of four. Tanner Ludgate. Yep, that is Ludgate, who had a touchdown against Fort Lupton, I believe, to close out the game. Yep, yep. about a 65-yarder, I think it was. Yeah, very impressive. Well, Ludgate showed there. And he also had one near the end of the game against Valley yep. that didn't go that. He's got speed. And he's a fast kid. Second down and six to go for the 40-yard line. There's the pitch left. And stutter stepping, swinging it to the outside and being thrown for a loss is Becker. Loss of four. So Becker now with two carries for 27 yards. He does have a 31-yard touchdown run. Well, that time they were setting up a 59 where the tight end helps to, to block on the defensive end and your tackle pulls out to go downfield. And I looked, our tackle was way upfield, but he didn't secure the end here and block somebody like he should have been, which would have been the outside linebacker at that situation. Morgan so. Community College here to make your dreams become a reality. Check him out at morgancc.edu, Morgan Community College. I mean, these are lessons learned, Ron. Yep. With eight and a half minutes to go in the game. And my lesson, hopefully the referee lesson, is know how to switch <laughs> sides here between quarters. Third and ten for the 36 under center is tied. A bootleg right. He's going to throw. He's going to throw up his back foot receiver out there. And it is broken up and up. intercepted along the left sideline. Oh, man, intercepted now at the 46-yard line. The Rebels have possession. But there was tight coverage out there. Tried to squeeze it in there. Tight coverage, young guys trying to catch the ball. Sometimes doesn't always work to your advantage. And it was intercepted over there by Isaac Anmaswati. How about that for a name? That's a heck of a name. Well, I know, it's hard for me to say Isaac. Anyway, first to, <laughs> first to 10 at the 47. <laughs> no, when you got a lot of syllables, A-L-M-A-S-W-A-R-I. Uh, a lot of uh, syllables and vowels. <laughs> First and 10 for the 47. Stam, left side. A stiff arm to the 45, but the beat diggers are there to meet him as he's driven along the sideline at the 42 for a gain of five. You know, uh, Brody Dick from Brush was right there on that tackle, but he just did not quite have enough lead in the uh, shorts there. Right. Because Stam's a big guy. He met him where he's supposed to, tried to wrap him up, but Stam. Well, check it. I might have shortchanged him a yard, make it 30 yards. Nonetheless, second down and four for the 41. Well, Central might take a timeout if they have a chance to score. And here's the handoff right up the gut and a yard, and that's about it. That, I think, was Hesse. They'll give him a couple. Third down and a couple to go at the 39. 6.35 to go in the game. The Bay Diggers lead the Rebels 56-6. to And here comes one of their receivers in there with play instructions. That's Dominic Jones. On third and two from the 39-yard line, the Bay Diggers are up by 50 in the game. Two receivers split out to the right. Dominic Jones resets on the outside right. Thompson on third and two. Back to throw, pressure up the middle. The pass is caught. First down and getting loose to the 10, to the five, and a touchdown. That's going to go 39 yards away for Mario Cosos Ledesma. 
That's his second catch of the night. And it goes the distance. It's 56 to 12. Well, they kept trying to throw the ball to him all night long, and finally they were able to connect. And of course, they connect for a big play and a touchdown late in the fourth quarter. Not exactly what the brush defense wanted to have, because I know these guys take pride in not letting people score against them. Right. But, you know, it's uh, it's just one of those things. They have a little bit of a breakdown. Well, the touchdown maker, Gosos, will also attempt the extra point yep. off the hold of Tenet and Thompson. Awaiting the snap. It's low. The kick is up, and that one is very high and very true. One more break, a 30-second break. Five minutes to go under a running clock. It's Brush 56, Weld Central 13 on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The Bay Diggers just gave up a 39-yard touchdown on a pass from Tenayden Thompson to Mario Cosos Ledesma. And we're under four minutes to go, running clock. Brush leads 56-13. to 13. Yeah, I'm not going to mispronounce. I'm Cuban. I better not mispronounce we that We just name. got the thumbs up from the family down yeah. right in front of us. Great out of job. bounds at the 25-yard line. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm not sure there's a Cuban out there, but Ronaldo Albo. Okay, that can certainly pass. Don't think, don't think you're just a full-blooded American. There, there's... You know, not so much with Randy Dright, but Ronaldo Albo, <laughs> without a doubt. That'll work. That'll yes, work. Yes. <laughs> it's nice for your name to have flexibility. Exactly. See, like my dad, he's he's John Sr.'s Juan Eduardo, mm -hmm. but in English, with his clients, he's John Beltran. As the kick went out of bounds, I'll re-kick. In Spanish, he's Johnny Beltran. So, you know, it's just the way. So. Yep. Like, I was telling you, I called soccer yesterday in Spanish, so I used the name Juan Beltran in Spanish, uh -huh. and English is John Beltran. So exactly. it's, it's just easy. You can flex the name. Yep. So if you're ever on a Spanish, Ronaldo Albo. That'll work. Or you could say Ron, but Ronaldo sounds, yep. uh, you know, there, there, there's That's what my play. Spanish teacher called me in high school. Oh, did exactly, she really? Yep. I love it. Ronaldo. I, <laughs> I love it. I love the way it sounds. All right. Now kick it off. This will be Mario Cosos Ledesma with a kickoff at the 35. And he will squib this baby, and it's picked up at the 24 and downed right there. It is down by Kyle Wellen. And why does the clock stop? Are, are they stopping? I don't know. Guys, yeah, then the officials say, hey, run the clock. Run it. There you go. Ain't no reason. I'm having a late dinner, Ron, at home. Come on. I mean, you can't. You're going to uh, make it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a 9.30 dinner, uh, <laughs> 10 o'clock dinner. I'm sorry, 9.30. When I think we're, do I think we're in Fort Morgan here? No, we're, we're not that close. Not that close. By the way, the Colorado Prep Scoreboard Show with Kevin Schaefer from 9.30 to 11. Kevin's a machine. Oh, yes. I mean, you listen, he's got great interviews, scores of all the games tonight. 9.30 coming up here on 10.10 KSIR. He's got one more week because 3A and 5A conclude their regular seasons yep. next week. But he'll play all previews. There's Nate Tyne off left tackle. And he spun down to the ground after a gain of about three to the 28. We'll get to our post-game show immediately. We won't even take a break. Because we basically have the numbers that are almost final from what we had at halftime. Yeah. Rush didn't add a lot more other than Enojos and Becker with three carries that combined for about 130 yards. Yep. Here all for touchdowns. And those are the beat digger touchdowns here in the second half. Second down and seven to go from their own 28-yard line. Two plays remaining in this game with a minute 22 to go. The backs are split. This will be a handoff right side and a nice hole. That's Tanner Ludgate to the Boy. 34 for a gain of six. Boy, Tanner would sure love to get another touchdown here to close <laughs> out the season. I know he'd love that. He's got the speed. He's got. He's oh, quick. He hits that hole fast. So if they can just get a little crease in that line, he might be gone. And he's hard to. Uh, you better catch happen him. right now, Ron, because yeah. this is the last play of the game. Yeah. You know they're not getting off another play. Yeah. It'll be this one, if anything. No way they're getting off another play because by the time they snap it, there'll be about 42, 41 seconds to go, and they won't need to run another play. Third down and one for the 34. Let's see if they do hand it off to Ludgate. He's one of the two deep backs. With 35 seconds to go, clock running. And this is the deep back. I don't think that's Ludgate. No. And he'll at the line of scrimmage. And that'll be it. The Brush Bee Diggers win tonight over the Weld Central Rebels by a score of 56 to 13. And 
Oh, I got it. Yeah. Well, because I got to, I have to multi-purpose this, Ron. Because <laughs> I got to get to the post game show. I got my sponsors here. Another screen brought to you by Stubbs Gas and Oil. Fill up your cooler and gas up your car. Stubbs Gas and Oil, easy and convenient. Makes them the only stop you need on your way to the big game. Stubbs Gas and Oil. The B Diggers win 56 to 13. Weld Central drops the two six and one. The B Diggers seven and two going into the playoffs. And Ron, before we get to the numbers quickly. They did not play down to their level of competition. They came out strong tonight. No, they did. They played very well. They they made sure they came in and proved to them they're the superior team, and they played exactly like that. So, you know, this is what they want to look forward to going into the playoffs. They do have to work on some things. they got to work on showing up, showing up those special teams. I know I've said it over and over again, but it's one of those things that have to be taken care of because that can come back to haunt you later on. We know they're solid on offense. You know They've got multiple weapons there. It's going to make it very difficult for teams preparing and scouting them to find out exactly what they're going to do and how they're going to stop them. Yeah. That's going to be difficult. The defense, we knew coming into the season, the defense would be the strong point of this team and what they could they could rely on and hang their hat on early in the year until the offense got under control. And they are exactly just like that. They're very tough. That's going to be a hard defense to get any kind of yards against. And so this is going to be an interesting playoff run. I'm excited to see it, you know, coming back into our town again after a long drought there. And it's good to see that. I know these guys, they Coach Schwent and his team, and when you really take a look at it, he's had to battle through so much adversity taking over the helm. No football field, a new building, COVID, play, you know, players being sick, players coming, you know, not being able to, to participate, getting sick, whatever, just different things like that. And, you know, um, he's did a great job and his coaching staff of holding those guys together. And I know this group of seniors, he's been with them a long time. His son plays on the team. So that tells you right there he's put in a lot of time with these guys over the years. And for them to have this opportunity as a group of seniors to be able to get into the postseason, I mean, how exciting can that be? It's awesome, Ron. And we do know as well, you got a heck of a senior class. There's some good athletes in the other classes. But the truth of the matter is, without uh, beating around the bush here, is that Brush did not have those incredibly athletic classes from freshman to senior year. They had to sprinkle in. Yep. You know, it wasn't like all the way from 98, 99, then starting when they got back into the playoffs in 2002, where you had great athletes in multiple classes. They do have some good athletes from freshman through junior, but the senior class is the one that's really getting it done this year. I mean, that's yeah. the one that's carrying the load. And uh, I'm only mentioning that because it's a challenge for a head coach, you know, when, when your athlete pool is a little bit limited. And again, that's not a knock on the athlete. It's just a reality. Brush was so good for so long. Every school, even Mullen, you know, a 5A school, they, they, you know, you go through stretches where you can't win every single year. Yeah. And it's nice to see the big diggers because it wasn't coaching why they missed the playoffs from 2016 to 2020. Just not enough horses there, Ron. And Lance Schwinn did a heck of a job building back this program. Yeah, and that's exactly true. And, you know, when you're on the outside, you 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 have your opinion and your view of what you see, and you might make, you know, those assumptions that it's the coaching. But when you're on the inside and you're in the grind every single day, every single week, every year, you know exactly what you're dealing with. You know what you've got. And you're doing the best that you can as a coaching staff to get some confidence in those kids Get them in a situation where they can be successful and hopefully get some some time to win. That's what your job is, and it's a very difficult job. Anybody that's ever done that understands that that's not an easy task, and it's very stressful on everybody involved, coaching staff on down. So, yeah. you know, you, you take it for granted. When, you, when our town has had a lot of success, we've taken it for granted, I'm sure, at times just expecting us to be there. But that's not always the case. And so now we're, I think we're on the back, on the swing, you know, the uphill swing again. So it's good. It's a great feeling to have that. And, you know, I'm, I'm so happy for this group of individuals and for this coaching staff to be able to feel that success. Without again. a doubt. I mean, they all deserve it. There's no yeah. doubt about it. But Lance went in his fifth year at the helm and really fourth full year because he only yeah. played four games last year. And you mentioned all the factors from COVID. It's nice that they're getting back to the playoffs because we had this feeling every year, Ron, every single year from 2002 through the 15th season, yep. which was Reed Call's first of the two years that he was the head coach. And now, you know, brighter days are back again for the Beat Diggers here in 2021. They had already clinched the playoff spot a couple of weeks ago, but they're playing like the playoffs already started because they're coming out strong, which they did tonight. Never had to punt 56 to 13. They outgained Weld Central tonight, 393 to 87. 
So oh. actually, the the kickoff return for a score was longer <laughs> than the offense than the play from the line of scrimmage. Yes, Cesare Knowles, three touchdowns tonight. He had ten carries for one hundred and ninety-eight yards. You had Griffith five carries for fifty-three and a score. Kyle Wellen had thirty-nine carries on uh, thirty-nine yards on four carries and a touchdown. Hondo four carries for thirty-three yards and a touchdown. Jace Krieger four for six and a score. Jonathan Becker two carries twenty-seven yards had a thirty-one yard touchdown, and that was essentially it. Hondo threw it three times or completed it three out of five for fifty-six yards, but. The offensive numbers don't matter as much as what you were documenting. Defense, defense, defense. You held a guy, a bulldog like Zane Stem and a rebel as well, 30 yards on 18 carries. That was phenomenal. Yeah, when you can do that, you've got to be excited. you can, you got to be feeling good about yourself going into this, hopefully, potentially long run over the next four weeks in the playoffs. And that's, that's, what, you're, that's what it's all gauged for. I mean, you talk about... You know, when these guys were back in football camp and they were back in the summer, they're lifting weights, they're they're coming out, they're doing whatever they can. They are talking about what the long run is going to be, and that's the playoff. And you know, another thing about every one of these kids is that these guys, a lot of these guys are multi-sport athletes. So they don't just they don't have success only in football. They've had success in baseball. They've had success in wrestling. They've had it in basketball. And so, you know, to see the effort that these guys put in all across uh, each sport within our school is is amazing and hats off to these guys that they all stay competitive and that they all get a chance to experience all this all this that's going on right now it's gonna be a special year yeah it already is yep. it's already a special year for especially these group of boys you know because they made the playoffs in football basketball is going to be pretty solid you're bringing back the the top rebounder and top score in Enojos, mm -hmm. and they've got great pieces to work around and don't even get me started with baseball. This could be the, the best team Brush has had ever. Yeah. Ever. We'll see. I mean, that's uh, – I, I, I know – I want to say that almost as an outsider, even though I we've covered the team here for uh, – you know, I don't want to put that type of pressure. No, but I know the talent. And maybe that's the expectation. This team is that good. And they're going to be good in other sports here, which is why you mentioned they play multiple sports. And one thing is playing multiple sports. They're excelling at multiple sports and it's going to come out here in full force like it has for football and it'll be throughout the course of the winter and the spring as well but first things first playoff start next week all you got to do is tune in to uh, 1010 KSIR preps and more from 1 to 2 or on our Facebook page 1010 KSIR sports on Twitter at KSIR sports as well as the V-Diggers win tonight by a score uh, 56 to 13. I don't think Coach Wynn is going to make it all the way. No, he's here. he's got a lot of celebrations not, going not on. Not for there. road games. Not, and that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, we will speak to him. Hopefully, the B Dick. We don't even know if they're going to host a first round game. Uh, they're a league champion, so I would think that would be enough. But we will see. Yeah. But oh. stay tuned. Kevin Schaefer will have the breakdowns tonight. He'll have playoff possibilities coming up tonight for the Colorado Prep Scoreboard Show, which is still just over half hour away. Well, it was my incredible pleasure to work with Ron Albo for at least one game this season. Ron will be back with uh, Tyler here coming up here for the uh, playoffs, and that will begin on Saturday, a week from tomorrow. For Ron Albo and our sound engineer and producer, Rose Condes, I'm John Beltran. The final score once again tonight from Keensburg. The Brush Bee Diggers win their sixth in a row. They finish out the regular season at 7-2, and two, defeating the Weld Central Rebels 56-13 to 13, right here on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network.